What is going on? It's Alex coming back at you with another video. And today we're going to be breaking down the biggest risers and fallers of day two of the 2024 NFL Combine. This, of course, covers the cornerbacks, the safeties, as well as the tight ends. If you are new, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. You know how to use YouTube. Let's get right into this. Where we will be having one star riser, which will be talked about right before the risers, and then one star faller or lack of a star faller right before the rest of the fallers. Let's get right into it, though, because we want to start off on a high note and then maybe have a little bit more time to criticize the uh, those who broke our hearts. So uh, our big riser today, there wasn't a massive winner, in my opinion. I feel like, you know, Quinion Mitchell, we had that expectation. His nickname's Rocket, like definitely considered him on here. It would have been easy. But Cole Bishop, I mean, he has 29 inch arms, definitely a concern, but the fact is, the biggest issue with him was, honestly, his athleticism wasn't necessarily really there on tape as a real speed guy. Like, what I loved about him was his IQ. It was the immeasurables. All of a sudden, this guy runs in the sub four fives, which is ridiculous, at a six foot two, 206 pound frame. That's a very good frame. Again, kind of T-Rex arms there, but still kind of plays him into that day two conversation where before it was like, hey, you're just a really good football player. You see the measurements and it's like, yeah, I mean, you're not going to run fast. You're going to have short arms. Now the story is a lot different. So only, his only issue right now is the fact that he doesn't have 30 inch arms. But a team like the Packers where I'm about to drop y'all's uh, deep dive because I'm actually going to decide to wait. I'm building up the rest of the entire NFL. So we'll be having ultimate draft guides come out for every team. But I'm going to wait till after uh, the combine in order to finish those off because there's a lot of moving parts and I'd rather not drop a video, even though it's ready, when it's not going to be complete a couple of days after. So doing that for y'all. But yes, I think the Packers, their secondary needs a lot of help. And this is a very good value player for you to get to help fix that. Then, of course, the other risers talked about Quinion Mitchell already. This dude was running a blazing low 4 3 40, uh, obviously explosive as all get out. You know, he came and he tested 195 as well, six foot. A lot of these corners are in that 5'11 tier. So it's just really good to see Quinion put some, you know, rubber to the road and actually prove how damn fast he is. You know, Nate Wiggins, I debated putting him on here, but, you know, that. Injury does make me a little bit more iffy. He was originally going to be a faller until we found out it was only a quad injury or not a quad, a hip flexor injury. So, you know, still 428. Got to mention him. Did phenomenally in that. Obviously extremely explosive. Hit 24 miles per hour. But the uh, 10 second split, he was the third worst. So again, going to keep him off the risers list. Nehemiah Pritchett was someone who's a little bit more on the undersized route around that 180 mark during the year. He's up to 190 and hit a 436. That's incredible. Yes, it's not going to solely be based off. I mean, people are trying to get mad at the fact that I'm talking about risers and fallers based on, you know, their 40 times and, you know, not very many factors. But the simple fact is that's what the combine's testing. It's not like they're moving up 50 spots on a board because they run 0.1 seconds faster than some other dude who's more talented. That's not happening. But I am showing you where they should be going. Uh, Nia Brian Pritchett did a phenomenal job. He's been a very consistent corner. He missed the first three games of this past year, but he's been very, very consistent. Even like back two years ago, I was still mocking him in the third round. And I think he's going to be an early day three guy. Uh, Jerry and Jones, phenomenal slot corner. Very smart, very fluid. Sub 4-4-40 four, four, as well. Did really good in the field drills. I appreciate that about him. There's a lot of teams that are looking for that star nickel. And, you know, especially a lot of teams looking for and nickelback slot corner. This is the type of guy they're going to be going for in that third round. And I think he is very, very much well deserving of that. He's actually one of the best, if not the best slot corner in the draft. And got to mention that as well. Uh, DJ James, he's up to 175 and still ran a sub 4 5 40. That's awesome because he was listed around 160 to 165. I know, again, 40 time isn't everything, but the fact is he added weight. He was heavier than Nate Wiggins which is wild to me and, you know, super fluid. Again, those open, those field drills, he did phenomenally well on big fan of DJ James. Again, the weight was the big issue with him. I still think he'll be going in that same range as Pritchett. Cause I think his talent's a little bit better, but his frame a bit worse. Uh, Andrew Phillips. I mean, I've been harping on this dude since the senior bowl 
you know, just one of those guys where I had no idea, honestly, that he was going to be a legit draftable prospect. And then you just see how well he popped off to me. I didn't do a tape study on him before. He just popped off. I was like, who the hell is this Kentucky kid? And, you know, very solid measurables. Overall, this dude ran a very solid 40 as well as sub four five. You know, just really, really damn solid. Like, I appreciate the fact that Andrew Phillips has backed up his physical profile with some really good reps, it's even ver- versus guys like Keon Coleman, Johnny Wilson. Like, this guy um, has been able to hold his own. I'm not sure about the Keon Coleman part, but I remember seeing someone talk about it. But definitely Johnny Wilson. That's what he was most known for there at the Senior Bowl. Speaking of Senior Bowl, Cam Hart. Uh, besides his three cone and shuttle, which he's not known for being the most shifty guy on planet Earth, he still did a phenomenal job at 63202. First off, God tier frame. Then he runs a four or five flat. So he has that ability. And then he does really well in the on field drills. That to me is a perfect blend. Of course, I would have rather of him, you know, be a little bit better in terms of the shiftiness and agility. Could have tossed in actually Kamari on here because Kamari Lassiter, he's done a phenomenal job. Uh, really good testing overall, including the best three cone and shuttle. Then we got to talk about Max Melton, also in the four threes, just like his brother, which is awesome. A little bit under six feet tall, as the majority of this corner class apparently is. But, you know, again, one of those guys who felt almost like a receiver who had corner skills, and that's a very coveted attribute. And then, you know, you could talk about some teams like the Packers, for example, that are going to be looking for that third corner and you compare him back up with his brother, that would be pretty cool. But regardless, uh, I think that he will be a sneaky option because even, you know, DJ was talking about him looking like a top 50 player. Uh, I don't think he's going to get up that far, but this round two corner group definitely has a lot of variability. So I think that he could potentially sneak into that later uh, or that mid day two territory. Tyke Smith, got to give this dude a shout out as well. I mean, there were projections, I think, at the Senior Bowl where they said he was going to be 4'6". He runs it in the 4'4", four, four, like 4'4", four, 6'. Four, range. That's incredible. Going from 4'6 to 4'4", four, 6'. Four, it doesn't sound like that much to someone who doesn't know the difference in 40 times. That is massive. And, you know, for someone who has really damn good tape, I discounted him because I looked at those projections rather than actually doing my own analysis. So I'll call myself out for being lazy. Phenomenal job. Good job, Tyke Smith. You know, just again, showing explosiveness, showing that top end speed that we didn't know he had. He's been a very talented player for a very long time since West Virginia. So glad to see him finally getting what he deserves. Uh, Theo Johnson, Ben Sinnott. There's a couple other guys in here as well. Um, I'm forgetting Illinois tight end. That dude deserves some credit, but he did have some drop balls. I gave him a shout out on Twitter because I think players like that deserve it, but I don't know if he's necessarily a massive riser after the tweet. He ended up dropping quite a few balls. But that's okay. Uh, Theo Johnson, you know, he just comped physically to Jimmy Graham. I mean, after we've seen back-to-back years of Penn State tight ends that went a little bit under the radar and then randomly showed up as physical freaks, it kind of makes sense. So uh, Theo Johnson was actually somebody I really liked, I think, two years ago. He did pop off to me. A good blocker as well. Got to give him credit where credit is due. I put top 150, would not be surprised if he's one of those dudes who ends up rising up in the later process to be a round three target, but he just hasn't gotten enough momentum yet. Ben Sinnott has done a phenomenal job. I mean, just overall, he kept his number 34 because he was a walk-on. And, you know, I respect that with all my heart for a tight end to keep that type of number because he wants to have homage to his uh, the fact that he is a walk-on. You know, respect. But you know, 40 inch vertical, ridiculous. Talk about Theo Johnson, 39 and a half inch. Like these guys are physical freaks and uh, well deserving of being on the risers list. The biggest faller today though, Kalen King. I mean, it's not necessarily today. It's also just this whole off season. Uh, ever since he got absolutely toasted, you know, put with some nice Hershey chocolate in between some graham crackers and become a fucking s'more. Like ever since he, that's happened, this dude dead ass has just been nothing. And it really, it pains me because I thought Kalen King was going to be, you know, my number two corner in the class. And, you know, he was an excellent number two. And then I just don't know what happened. I don't, I don't know if there was some underlying injury that he just never got fixed. It interrupted his play from being able to be as good as it should be. I don't understand. I don't. Uh, But I think a team that could be looking for a safety slash slot slash maybe uh, can flex into corner two range. Uh, I think that's going to be proper. 
you know, I don't think he's going to be selected on day two because of the fact that he ran a four, six and just, I mean, people were talking about him as a pure safety convert, but you know, with DeMonte KZ potentially coming up on a contract, well, not coming up on a contract, but he is a net positive cut. It is potentially a way to get some savings there. You get some chemistry right away with Joey Porter Jr. And you're getting someone who's already proven to have a ton of talent that just doesn't seem to be maximizing his potential. So hopefully Kaylin King bounces back, but it is a bit scary. Then we got the rest of the fallers. Um, Kool-Aid McKinstry just didn't test today. Uh, unfortunately, he has, I think, a Jones fracture in his foot. He's going to test at his pro day, but then he's going to get surgery after that. That just unfortunately does drop you when you do look at it. It's hard to imagine him going top 50, but people already assumed that he wasn't going to be in the first round. So I can only assume that he gets a little bit lower because of the fact that he's going to have to be coming off a of surgery. Uh, Dwight McLaughlin ran a really nice 44740, which is a big plus. But, you know, 32 inch vertical, that's not very exciting for me for someone where I appreciate and respect his uh, off man ability. That explosiveness is something I covet, and I'm a little bit surprised, to be blunt, that he did not have a much better uh, vertical jump. So a little bit unfortunate there. I thought he's a little bit stiff in the on-field drills as well, but you know, still a really, really good value player if you can get him just outside that top 100. And his rake straw came in at 183, sub six foot. That's not necessarily great. And then he has been dealing, he apparently hurt himself earlier in the day. So I do think that, you know, this is definitely TBD on rake straw, but in the four fives, I'm hoping that was affected by that injury. And maybe he bounces back, gives a four, four, five at his pro day. We'll see. So fingers crossed he gets healthy, hoping the best for him because he didn't test very well in the jumping either. I think he only did his vertical and was, uh, it was either only the vertical or the broad and it was just definitely not going to be very commendable. Let's put it that way. Sion Vaki just has alligator arms and, you know, love the guy. But people are even saying like DJ and Charles are saying like this dude should be a running back. That's not the type of criticism you want to hear. I got to meet him uh, in Mobile and he's a really cool dude and loves football, but also really slow 40, just not looking great at all. Um, I'm actually saving Cam Kitchens for last for a reason, because I mean, there's more of a fun story behind it. Brevin Span Ford you know, just the worst of all the tight ends by a good margin. And that's someone who really needed to succeed. He actually did better in the blocking drill than I expected, but that was one rep. Now, the bell of the ball, Cam Kinchins, not, I mean, I guess technically Kalen King was, but Cam Kinchins, you know, he had the same 10-yard split and 40-yard dash as James Williams, who's 30 pounds heavier than him, who's consistent, to, uh, who's considered a linebacker. And then he had a nine foot two broad jump. And you might say, oh, that sounds pretty nice. Uh, that is the worst since 2015. And in 2015, it was only one inch shorter than that. So it's not like he is uh, really squeaking out here. One of the worst combine performances of all time, especially from a top prospect. You're talking about, I mean, if you want to highlight Kyle Hamilton, he had really good, really good explosiveness drills. Cam did not. He had all time low and that's really unfortunate because i was really hoping cam kitchens can come in here you know run a solid four or five flat have you know a 35 inch vert which you know and then you know maybe a 10 foot broad and that's that that's stupid pretty low for someone who's considered to be a potential top 11 player on some people's boards that i know so um just unfortunate but Apparently, Florida State fans eat that shit up. I mean, I just randomly tweeted it out, and then that's like one of the biggest interacted tweets I've ever had on Twitter. It's kind of weird, but cool. I did not know the rivalry between the U and Florida State's that heavy, but I do love y'all. Thank you so much for watching, showing the support you always do. We'll be back tomorrow for day number three, and we're actually live streaming that one. Don't think I'm going to be live streaming on Sunday. I don't really care about the O-line that much, but tomorrow's going to be where the fireworks happen. So I'm very excited for that. See you on the far side.